All right, everybody, good afternoon, and thanks so much for watching News Now, which is a part of Fox10Phoenix.com. My name is Pilar Arias. I'm hopping onto the mission control, onto the set, that is, just to get things going for my portion of News Now, taking you all the way until 1.30 until Mike Page rejoins us. So hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. We are almost to the weekend. Feel free to let us all know on the YouTube chat what your plans are. I do have those top stories ready to go for you. I'm going to check the audio, make sure everything is perfect, so that way you can hear everything, you can see everything. Works great. And actually, I'm going to bring you right out here to Phoenix, Arizona first for this first top story, our very own Linda Williams. As soon as I can get our live picture up here, here we go. South Mountain Tower Cam. Take a look at that. Chase Field roof is closed. But it's the 80s in Phoenix right now, so no complaints. Matter of fact, 82 is what we're registering at right now. All right, so this first top story I have for you, our very own Linda Williams taking a look at that ride-sharing strike started yesterday. A tale of two drivers on this day when ride-share drivers for Lyft and Uber were to organize a nationwide strike. Patty, who drives for Uber and Lyft, is striking. Travis, who drives only for Lyft, says he hadn't heard about the strike. If you had known about it, would you have? No, because I feel like it's something that you chose to do. You know, this is a company where it's, you sign up for it. It's not like a, an offer uh, for employment. Patty's driver apps are off today in protest. Last year, she says she often made $100 driving for six hours. Now she makes $50 or less driving the same amount of time. When Uber's getting 70%, 80% of our money and left, um, how can you say that that's fair? Travis says he understands why drivers are upset that the money is not what it used to be. Because when it first started, there weren't that many people driving. Now there's like a million people driving around the Phoenix area alone. And so it's not going to last forever. You make it a bunch of money driving people around. Patty insists it's corporate greed that cuts deeply into what she could earn driving. We reached out to Uber for comment. They responded, writing in part, quote, we'll continue working to improve the experience for and with drivers. We have Uber's full statement on our website, fox10phoenix.com. I'm Linda Williams, Fox 10 News. All right, thanks to our very own Linda Williams there. We're going to head out to Rhode Island now where a school district is reversing its decision to not serve students with any lunch debt, a hot meal. The owner of Jell's Kitchen has been following this story since the very start. And while she says there's still a lot more to figure out, she is happy to hear that Warwick Public Schools will be offering hot meals for students, even if they do owe lunch money. Yeah. Warwick Public Schools is taking a step back from their recent controversial lunch policy. Earlier this week, the district said if a student owes money on their lunch account, they will be served a sun butter and jelly sandwich at a policy subcommittee meeting Wednesday night, Chairwoman Karen Bacchus said it's time to take another look. The policy subcommittee is recommending that Warwick School Committee allow the students their choice of lunch regardless of their account status. With the sun butter policy, Bacchus says the lunch that was originally picked would have been thrown away. So we don't want to embarrass, we don't want to shame, we also don't want to waste. So for now, as the full committee reviews the lunch policy, students won't be limited to a cold sandwich. We seek to find a balance between being fiscally responsible and ensuring that all of our students are provided with a healthy, nutritious lunch. Angelica Penta, the owner of Jell's Kitchen, made national headlines after offering $4,000 worth of donations to Warwick schools, only to be told no thanks. She was at the meeting and was happy to hear the committee say they are now looking into accepting the money. Nobody wants to see kids get shamed or be denied a meal. Penta says her efforts have received so much attention, she's been getting calls from all over. She's confident she could even reach the district's outstanding balance of $77,000 by next Monday. We are so thankful for everyone that is donated. Without everybody donating, we would not be able to do this and fight for these kids and make sure that everybody is able to get a meal. The full school committee will take another look at this policy on Tuesday, May 14th. Reporting in Warwick, I'm Sheena Lushudo, Eyewitness News. All right, this next top story we have for you here on News Now, which is a part of Fox 10 Feet. Phoenix.com heading out to Florida where a newborn baby was found alive in a dumpster. In a 
Yellow police tape sits on top of a dumpster in West Boca after a newborn baby was found inside early Wednesday morning. They just ran with the baby and then the baby was crying. I think it was dirt all over the baby because, you know, we don't know for how long the baby was in the dumpster and I don't know. But it's sad. Sheila Dominic says she came home from work and saw a maintenance man carrying the baby. They saw the baby, the, the hear the baby crying, and they took the baby. And then uh, I guess they called for help. And then the EMS truck come and they run with the baby. But for, for what I heard, the baby's going to be fine. The baby alive, wrapped in something, she says. Palm Beach Sheriff's detectives going door to door asking questions. They asked me. Is there a pregnant, do you, do, have you seen a pregnant lady around the community? I was like, no. That's horrifying that somebody would do something like that. That somebody's, that would be my grandchild. You know, that's really, I don't know what possesses people to do anything like that. That's horrible. Now detectives try to figure out who dumped this baby there and why. You know, I can't imagine a woman being that desperate. I would think bring it, you know, bring the baby to a church. They should figure out who the mom is and she should be arrested. It's been almost nine years since 21 year old Arizona State University ASU for short student Kylie Sousa was leaving a Tempe IHOP when she was lured over by a man in a vehicle. After a brief conversation, the man snatched her purse and the strap became tangled around her, dragging her some 20 feet by the fleeing car. Sousa was critically injured and died a few days later. Authorities believe there were others in the car at the time and witnessed the crime. I'm telling you this because we have another similar case, a woman killed in California. Surveillance video captures what appears to be a woman fleeing from a hooded attacker before she's thrown to the ground in an effort to steal her purse. Watch as the woman decides to fight back. She refuses to let go of her purse. She's dragged all the way to a waiting getaway car with two other people inside. She's still hanging on when the driver floors it. She's dragged, and we're stopping the video before she's run over. Moments later, a loved one can be seen running to her aid, but sadly, she didn't survive, and shoppers are rattled. Usually, like, if that happened, then just let it go. Let them take it, because your life is more important than the purse, so... It's like, wow. Fox 11 has learned that the LA County Sheriff's Department's had undercover detectives on scene surveilling the perps as this was happening, as they were suspected of being involved in other robberies. They even told Garden Grove PD to back off. They advised they were in the area, told us about the surveillance, asked us to stay away. But just minutes later, the woman was run over and the LASD team called Garden Grove Police for help. We arrived on scene, we found the victim down with some major injuries. She was taken to a hospital for treatment. During that time, their detectives, along with our detectives, were trying to catch up to the suspect vehicle. A pursuit happened and ended up in L.A. The three suspects were taken into custody near the 105 freeway in South L.A. They now have blood on their hands as their actions have caused the death of an innocent woman, a woman who made the decision to stand her ground. To defend myself, that's a very natural human reaction. You were with INS.